Hello my soccer universe to the review of the Serie A weekend. Quite an interesting weekend overall. This is of course already take two because I just talked 20 minutes and I saw that the sound quality was so bad that you don't even hear me most at some points which is not what I would like. So instead of make a, posting this, I thought I did a good video. Let's see, maybe it will be a little bit shorter because maybe 20 minutes was anyway a teeny bit too long. Uh, I really love the background back there. I decided to not have a Bologna and Cagliari on there because they have no, they are currently playing at the moment halftime. I, didn't even, I don't even know the result. So uh, that's why there are only 13 of the 15 teams up there and I'm doubling up with Milan because uh, not only was it an impressive performance, uh, not only did Zlatan score his 400th goal, but it was also, uh, I think, I have a feeling that Milan really has a shot at the Scudetto this season. Uh, they are not the top favorites now, but I this looked really, really impressive overall. Uh, yeah, it was shaky at the end we'll talk about that i think purely made some technical errors at the end that made it uh thing a whole lot more um tighter than it was supposed to be but as i said we'll talk talk about that uh it kicked off with the other really uh interesting game when you just look at the schedule um between atalanta and lazio my proper problem was that i watched it i had it on but I didn't listen to it because the sound was on the TV where I watched uh, the Bundesliga uh, switch around conference uh, thing, um, which on one side is fine because you can form your own opinion, but some, sometimes it really helps to hear what others are thinking as well. Uh, so yeah, it's it's a give and take. And if you're distracted, distracted by all the action was in the Bundesliga where there were many goals scored, uh, yeah, you can see I was not 100% focused on Atalanta Lazio. From what I could tell though is that it was a tightly fought game where I thought Lazio had a very good game plan and um, took deservedly the lead through Pedro. Um, uh, uh, Atalanta needed some time time going, but then uh, Zapata willed one in from a very acute angle. It was a really well taken goal just in stoppage time. It, uh, half time 1 1. I then had the feeling that Atalanta maybe wants to uh, go for the jug juggler and be offensive. I mean, they made the right subs, they made the uh, substitution of Pasaric and Ilicic uh, coming off, Malinowski Muriel coming on, so um, a little bit more punch going go, 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 go forward um nothing against the slovenes because they are awesome uh, in their own right but then it was lazio who scores through immobile deadly uh, uh, striker and uh despite atalanta maybe having a little bit more initiative i actually felt that lazio uh deserved that lead overall Yes, Lazio is so and so at the moment, you know, Sari Ball not quite uh, hitting it yet. And you need to give them time, and I hope that he gets the time. Uh, but yeah, Lazio took, took the lead and really looked uh, well uh, to win this, this game. And then I have to say, uh, the referee really annoyed me. There was Pepe Reina. Yes, he was not in a hurry. But there were objects flying his way and he wanted to take a free kick when there's a bottle right next to him lying. And he wanted to get rid of the bottle before he takes the, um, no, no, free kick, a goal kick. And the referee gives him a yellow card for delay of the game at the same moment where Reina is hit on the head by an object. This to me is unfathomable and I think rather disgraceful refereeing so i was not happy with that and that kind of set a little bit the scene then because uh their own very late again a stoppage time goal gets an equalizer that i at the mo at that moment i didn't really feel that atalanta all that deserved but you know it ends in a 2-2 atalanta also having a hard time getting a little bit going in the in this season but they're still up there as is lazio there's just one point behind atalanta uh, two teams that are still in the finding phase uh, in this season. Then, I was now not necessarily planning to watch Hellas against Juventus, uh, but you know, the kids were in the bathtub, and so I had a little bit more time uh, on my hand, and I turned the game, game on, although it was set for the Spurs United game, which I still don't know why I wanted to watch that one, but you know, everyone's talking about it, so okay, yeah, whatever. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> Nuno is sacked, I just heard uh, the, the video for the Premier League I did very early in the morning where I didn't uh, know about this yet, but I think by the time we post it pro 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 probably already happened. In any case, the game, I really thought that after losing to Sassuolo that Juve is gonna take it out on Verona. A Verona side that can be very pesky, it's well coached now uh, and it's really a team that uh, I thought uh, with Juric gone they will have a hard time, but no, they are really, really well coached. And I absolutely uh, think that they will, you know, they can play spoiler very, very well. And uh, maybe not challenge for Europe, but spoiler, I think this is very well in uh, Verona's um, grasp. If they have a really good season, they might get a conference league spot. That's the way I see, uh, I see, 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 see Verona. And if Giovanni Simeone keeps it up, I mean, he's got four against Lazio, then he had a substitute uh, role midweek, and now he starts, starts again and within three minutes scores two against Juve. The second one, an absolute screamer. Great goal, very well taken. He scored, I think, an even better one that was taken off for offside. Uh, and... Verona deserved every bit of that lead. Juve was not present. And you gotta be, I think you gotta be worried about Juve at the point. Second half, Juve tried to take the initiative, be proactive, and score the goals that they needed. Uh, it just, it always seemed a little bit so, 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 so. But you know, the team is still trying to find itself in many ways and I thought that Dybala really tried to take the initiative. Um, the goal then came relatively late through McKenney, he yanks it under the crossbar. At that point, I thought, yeah, Juve might probably get the uh, will probably get the equalizer. If it wasn't for Mantibo, who made an absolutely killer save uh, by Dybala on the other side, uh, a slightly earlier, Kalinic should have converted probably Verona's only real chance. To make it 3-1 uh, at that point, and that would have sealed the deal. Uh, but Verona, overall, I think, deserved 2-1 winners, and Juve really in crisis now. Uh, after all the games, already 16 points behind. I still don't count them out. There's still a 1% chance that they win the title, and I still don't count them out for the Champions League, because I think if they find each other, I think Juve will be dangerous. I re I'm not counting out an Allegri team, just like that. Although we are close. <laughs> we are really, 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 really close. Um, but yeah, I'm not quite there, but I think lots of questions need to be asked. And, and um, I think also in the winter they need to get something for midfield because um, there is a big gaping hole and the balance of the team is not quite right. They might also need someone up front uh, a little bit more clinically. But I think there's a lot of talent. Also, I think you need to hand keys or the keys to the team which uh, Allegri is not doing. Um, other than that, uh, the City Rivals Torino get a big win over Sampdoria, 3-0, hence they find themselves up there on my wall. Uh, Correa scores two for Inter in the 60s and 60th eight to give them a, a win over Udin, Fiorentina also on, on the roll. Venezia getting a draw at Genoa. Sassuolo follows up the great win at Juve with a loss to Empoli. Transitive property would then uh, say Empoli, Sassuolo, Juve, we know it should be the other way around, proper, 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 and transitive property does not apply to soccer in any way. So yeah, there you go. In the Campania Derby, Salerno only a little bit further south of Napoli, so they are kind, 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 kind of close. It was a heated uh, game where Zielinski makes the, 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 the difference, but two red cards. And Napoli staying up there. Staying up there, uh, being still very, very impressive, uh, potentially the most complete team in Serie A. However, the way that Milan played at Roma, the gap is closing. That gap is definitely closing. Uh, last weekend against Bologna, I th Milan really made a mess out of a very confusing situation. They almost did it this weekend as well. But for three quarters of the game, Milan looked like a championship team. That's all I can say. They had Roma so under control. Roma didn't have a shot on goal, I think, until the 75th minute or 73rd minute. And that was not even dangerous. Tatarujano did not need to uh, grab the ball. Uh, you know, didn't have to make a save for most of the time, which is good for Milan. Um... Zlatan, for a change, was outstanding. 
so uh, that doesn't happen all the time because last weekend he was really terrible. terrible. Uh, Leao was great. The midfield Cassie is back to his usual best. Uh, being his, it, seem, it, it seems like there's a body double somewhere ru running around. And what well, Tomori and especially Kier showed. I mean, Kier probably had the game of all of his life. The anticipation and the way he could uh, clean dangerous situations without committing a foul for most of the time. I was thoroughly impressed. This was a central defense masterclass. Up until later on, I will come to that point. But to me, he was the player of the game. Uh, closely followed by Palau. And uh, yes, uh, Ibrahimovic will grab the headlines. To me, he was not the player of the game. Although he played very well as well. But Simon Kier, <laughs> bravo. Uh, really bra bravo. Yes, we have to talk about uh, situation towards the end of the game. Which may have been his only mistake in the game. Uh, maybe a lost ball in the penalty box, but this reminded me of the old school Milan. When you see Maldini tackle, uh, you know, without making fouls and uh, Baresi, uh, similar anticipation. We're talking lofty, lofty high ground. Just saying. Uh, as I said, Milan controlled the first half, uh, first without having real chances, but then getting more and more comfortable. Dominating midfield, uh, limiting Zaniolo's impact. Uh, yeah, there were a few chances here, 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 there, but they anticipated every move that Roma made. And I think none of the top, uh, the front, uh, front players, Amichitarian, was uh, not present. Tammy Abraham barely had any touches, and so all the danger was squarely under control. And then you could have your own chances. Uh, Slatan missed early on uh, a chance. I mean, it was not really that Milan was knocking on the door in the first half. However, they scored first from a free kick, which I think was the f um, may have been Milan's first or second shot on goal as well. But at that point, they were thoroughly in control, and it seemed from his very young team a very, very mature performance already. The goal, yes, Rui Patricio needs to save that one. Uh, however, I really thought first. First of all, is Zlatan really gonna take take the figure? We know he doesn't score. Yeah, he proved me wrong. Uh, from uh, the outside, and then it was really that they Mili Mili put a mini wall next to the real uh, wall, which kind of um, blocked the view uh, of the goalie, who then uh, once the shot is taken, the wall separates. He's on the wrong foot and cannot save. Save anyway. Goalkeeping mistake. Yes but very uh, nicely played. Uh, Leao scored a worldie. <laughs> the way that was because Lata was in the build of an inch offside. And I was so mad because, I mean, the way he takes the ball, lobs it over the goal and then heads it in. This would have been one of my favorite goals and this was 100% Leao at his very, 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 very best. Start of the second half, Milan got serious and it seemed only a matter of time until they scored a second goal. Yes, Roma tried to uh, press forward and Milan hit them on the counter again and again and again and again. Uh, Slatan scored a goal where he was a little bit offside. Uh, then he again ran a bit in offside plus position on to goal, missed that one. They were f uh, two or three seed situation where I think if Milan plays a little, little bit cleaner, they also could have had a free shot or goal. And then Slatan gets brought down in the box where I, the, the referee immediately points to the spot. He had a look at it again, but I think there was too little to suggest that it was wrong, the wrong call. Yes, the ball is played, but I think it goes first through his body. There is a body check before he plays the ball for sure. And then I think there's even a touch on the foot. Uh, there, so yes, Rosso Nero glasses, but I thought that the call was overall all right. Although I know if this is not given as a penalty at first, uh, it will also not be made into a penalty. That much I know, Cassie converts. At that point, the game had already five yellow cards, more, many more were to come. And I gotta say that Cassie not only then score, uh, converts his goal, he also saw that Theo Hernandez, who was, I was very happy when Theo Hernandez uh, was playing because he brings a lot of dynamism uh, on his side of the game. But he was not clearly in the game. And this is where I have to say Pioli should have taken him off sooner. 
because uh, Casey was already doubling him up and really making sure that he's not getting in any bad situations. A bad situation he got and then he was sent off with a yellow red. I still thought that Milan had controlled the game so well that even with 10 men they can play this home because you can keep the ball. And again, uh, Salamakers go off, Palo Touré came on, that was, that was fine, but once he made the substitution in 76 minutes, we are Tonali, Romani, Oli, Bakayoko, come on, for Leao, Benazer and Krunic, three players who really can hold up the ball against, nothing against Tonali, but the other two are not players to hold up the ball. And then it got tight, and then it got tense, and suddenly Roma was everywhere, and the Roma made it very well. And probably should should have got a little bit sooner. Yes, they got their, their shots on goal. And very late on, El Sharami even scores. And then I knew it's three more minutes. And then a situation in the box where I think um, Kia touches definitely Pellegrini in the box. And I thought, boy, this, is, this looks very much like a penalty. I think since they were so close together, that probably was all right-ish. But yeah, yeah. Milan dodged the bullet there. I definitely have to, have, have to say because 2-2 two -two was not deserved. For three quarters of the game, Milan was outstanding. The last 15 minutes, Pioli messed it up, but Milan hung in there and got it through. But at the end, Milan could not have take any control of the ball anymore. And this annoyed me because you had the proper players out there or you could pull it through. But it was all about being defensive. I mean, they were then five at the back. Uh, and that was not necessary. But yeah, as I said, uh, if they play what they played at least for the first 75 minutes, Milan looks like a proper championship contender. Still not the favorite. My model has Napoli 40%, Milan 32%, but it really, really lo lo looks good. And now uh, you have already a um, seven point cushion onto Inter. You put Roma further behind, so uh, that's now 12, uh, 12 points. So Napoli and Milan marching, and in the next round, um, both have tricky ties. Napoli at home to Hellas. We know Hellas can be pesky. They had a tunnel lead of at at Milan, and of course the Milan derby, which seems to be much more a must win for Inter than for Milan. Uh, Inter needs to win this one to stay in the title race. Milan probably can even, uh, depending on what Napoli is doing, maybe can even be fine with a draw in many ways. We also have a Juve Fiorentina game, which I think could be very, very interesting because this, these two don't like each other. And yeah, I just don't see Juve losing three times in a row. But Fiorentina is a team that can be very spectacular, can be very, very, very bad. And depending on which Fiorentina shows up, this could be an interesting game. In any case, please let me know what you thought about the happenings uh, in Serie A uh, this weekend. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I almost made it to the 20, 20 minutes again. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.